Taking a walk in White Bear Lake, one need not look far to see the work of architect Bill Rust. Since starting his business, Rust Architects, more than 40 years ago, he's worked on nearly 30 projects for the city and countless home remodels for its residents. I'm more of a person who really likes to put my hands on something. You know, I'd rather lift the brick and put it in place than just kind of look at it or, or whatever, you know. His hands-on approach is somewhat unique in the world of architecture. His firm both designs and constructs, and like his buildings, he puts the same enthusiasm into his relationships. We're a small suburban firm, so we really take it to heart, you know, who and what we're serving. Rust Architects is a small firm, which makes one of his biggest accomplishments, the 1992 Ice Castle, all the more significant. My dad was over and uh, at the time, and uh, he was so proud of you know being a part of it and stuff like that. And though he takes a matter-of-fact approach when talking about his work, he practically melts when he talks about ice. Ice can be kind of monolithic looking, you know, kind of, you know, if it's not lit up with colors and stuff like that, it can be a little bit boring. I mean, I think it's, it's gorgeous just to see it. I've got some nighttime pictures of when we were building and stuff in it. And it's just eerie, it's just so exciting to me. Russ got involved with ice designs in the late 80s and was sponsored by Pepsi to build the 1992 Winter Carnival Ice Castle. The year the Super Bowl was held in Minneapolis, beating out other proposals, which left some bigger firms skeptical. They were a little suspect that a little, you know, three, four, five person firm is going to be able to pull this thing off. And I looked them in the eye and I said, if I said I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And boy, did he. The ice castle at 166 feet and 8 inches has a place in the Guinness Book of World Records as the tallest ever built. And like his office filled with memorabilia, Rust is filled with stories of the castle, which took about 22,000 ice blocks to build. He shared the moment the final piece, the 20-foot spire, was being placed at the very top. He just shifts it over a little bit, and the back of the crane is just doing this, you know, and set it down, and it's, and it's in place. And we both breathe a huge sigh of relief. Um, I will say, that my structural engineer had a heart attack because of that. Russ says the pressure to perform was immense. It's no surprise. It's said that one billion people saw, read, or heard about the castle around the world. And in St. Paul, traffic was stopped at Snelling Avenue all the way to Harriet Island just to get a glimpse the day it was unveiled. They had a big countdown, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it comes to zero and nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> and later we found out that there was a, some kind of a time delay on some of this stuff and then all of a sudden the William Tell Overture was used as the background music and so I still have that going in my brain even today, you know, blah, blah, blah. The deconstruction phase also took a great deal of planning. Though Hollywood came calling hoping to blow the castle up, liability and safety concerns ended those talks and when the weather warmed up, the castle had to come down. The wrecking ball comes up to it, and, and we're thinking, okay, so we're, we're, we're guessing. How many swings of the wrecking ball is it gonna to take to bring it down? The wrecking ball swings and thud. Nothing happens. Thud, nothing happens. I don't know how many times we hit the, before this thing finally started to come apart. Unlike most of rust structures, the castle's end was inevitable, but remarkably, it began with a hand-sketched design that hangs on his office wall. A reminder his hands-on approach has most certainly served him well. I'm not, you know, downplaying the computer and, and what technical people can do, but it doesn't have that same feeling and, and stuff that you get from, from seeing a hand drawing and stuff like that.